So you've bricked your router and you feel bad, but it might just be that your router is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. It may be possible to unbrick your router. Unfortunately, there is no definitive path to resurrection. resurrection. It depends on a variety of things, beginning with what kind of router you have and including how you went about wrecking it. In this installment of the Pineapple series, we'll look at four and a half different methods to unbrick your router, three and a half of which apply to GLINet routers. One, you may have heard of the 30-30-30 rule. Here's how it works. One, press and hold the reset button for 30 seconds. While the router is powered on, press and hold the reset button. 2. Continue holding the reset button while unplugging the router for 30 seconds. After the first 30 seconds, while still holding the reset button, unplug the router's power cable. Keep holding the reset button for another 30 seconds. 3. Plug the router back in and hold the reset button for another 30 seconds. After the second 30 seconds, plug the router back in and continue holding the reset button for a final 30 seconds. This process takes a total of 90 seconds, and the goal is to reset the router completely clearing any corrupted settings or configurations that might be causing issues. Please note that this is completely wrong in regards to GLINet routers, so please do not bother trying this. Some routers have other recovery methods. Consult your specific router's documentation. To access recovery mode for GLINet routers, hold the reset button down as you plug in the USB power cable and wait for the lights to stop flashing. You may or may not have to set your PC adapter's IP address to a static IP such as 192.168.12. Then you should be able to access the recovery mode through the web UI at 192.168.11 and get a second crack at flashing the firmware. I was able to resurrect a slate brick in this manner. Please note that if you attempt recovery mode after successfully flashing pineapple firmware, this may have the opposite effect of recovery and instead brick it. Another method is to transfer the firmware via TFTP and flash it. This method was not suitable for any of my many bricks. Nonetheless, I am going to create a dramatic enactment. To get this to work on Windows, you must first enable TFTP by going to Control Panel, Programs and Features, turn Windows features on or off, and then check TFTP Client. You may have to temporarily disable your firewall or otherwise permit TFTP at this point. Now open a command prompt and change directory into the folder with your firmware. Use the same recovery mode boot process as described before and then in your command prompt type the following command tftp-i192.168.11 put firmware.bin after the TFTP transfer is successful, the GLINet router should automatically begin flashing the firmware. Afterwards, in theory, you should now be able to access a web UI. Some of my supposedly renewed GLINet AR150s came pre-bricked, and I wasn't able to access the recovery mode through any of the aforementioned methods. Another AR150 hanged during the initial pineapple boot process. So I hooked up my USB to TTL adapter, remembering that TX goes to RX and vice versa, and was able to get a shell using these putty parameters. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to secure copy the firmware onto the router. I was, however, able to sideload OpenWRT firmware 19077 from the USB using the following command seen on screen, also available in the description. Then I flashed it with the following command. Rebooting it seemed to indicate that I now had 19077 firmware installed but I still couldn't access a web UI. Worse yet, I no longer had the ability to sideload firmware from the USB. It seemed I had created some sort of weird hybrid firmware as a result of attempting the factory reset and subsequent flash. This hypothesis was supported by the fact that, upon inspection, the router's IP was still 172.16.42.1. After manually editing the IP, however, I was able to access the web UI at 192.168.8.1 and re-reflash it to 17.16.42.1.1471. I was stoked that I was able to successfully use my USB to TTL adapter. But before you attempt any of these fixes, consider that maybe your router isn't even bricked. On one of my seemingly pre-bricked AR150s, I was unable to enter recovery mode by holding down the reset button and plugging it in. I couldn't get a web UI at 192.168.11 or 81, at least not over Ethernet. Eventually, I discovered that the router was broadcasting its SSID, and after setting a static IP, I was able to connect to it using the default password GoodLife. 
Then I was able to connect to a web UI at 192.168.8.1 and boldly flash the pineapple firmware over Wi-Fi. After all, what was the worst that could happen? I brick it? Thankfully, that was not the case this time around and I got another working pineapple out of it. One last pro tip, sometimes a static IP is not the way to go and releasing an IP via DHCP will fix things even when it shouldn't. This has been a public service announcement for in one half ways to unbrick your router. Up next, external antenna and awesome case mods. After that, we'll finally get down to the business of hacking. Thanks for watching.